This is a hearing in front of the Immigration Appeal Division and for the assignment project CS1, CSIA 101.73 and we are a three members, Mr. Tanvir Nawaz and myself, Amrinder Singh Atwal and Meena Sharma. We will start the proceeding with the questions to Mr. Philip Torres. Uh, the first question goes, for the record, please state your name, uh, first name and last name. My name is Philip Torres. Please state your date of birth. March 22nd, 1980. When did you come to Canada? Um, I came to Canada in October of 2013. How did you come to Canada? Did someone sponsor you? Um, I came to Canada under skilled worker category. So I came on my own. Do you have any family here in Canada? No, I do not have any family member here in Canada. Do you live alone by yourself in Canada? Um, as I said, as I mentioned, I do not have a family member here. Um, but uh, at the time, I was living with my girlfriend Rosemary, and uh, we lived together um, in March of two thousand fourteen. And after a few months, we decided to move in together. And uh, we bought a condo at that time. And uh, also at the same time, um, I had sponsored my daughter, Marcella, for permanent residency, um, to which we received uh, a letter to notify that the, my daughter's sponsorship was finalized. And we also received a COPR and it's been issued. Were you working at the time when you went to Brazil? Um. Uh, yes, I was in Canada. I was working um, as an IT specialist in a renowned company, uh, Econ. I was working at one of the branches in Toronto. Okay. While in Canada, did you file your taxes? Uh, yes, I did file my taxes as a responsible citizen here in Canada. Um, as Sorry, as a permanent resident. Um, and I also got my T4 from my Canadian employer when I was in Brazil looking after my grandmother. Um, at that time, I contacted a tax preparer to do my next year income tax, uh, which was the last one done in 2015 while I was overseas. When did you leave Canada? Um, I left Canada in um, March of 2015. Um, actually, I got a call from my sister, Maria, and uh, she happened to mention that my grandmother was uh, really ill at that time and I should come and see her as soon as possible. Was it your personal or business trip? Um, it was uh, my personal trip because I went to see my grandmother who needed uh, uh, care and attention. So yes, it was a personal trip. So Philip Torres, I'll take it from here. So uh, as my co-counsel, uh, he asked you very few uh, important questions. Uh, let me uh, get into the details. Uh, can you just tell us, uh, do you have any other family members in Brazil other than your grandmother? Um, other than my grandmother, I have a daughter who's a mi minor, Marcella, and uh, I have two sisters, but both of them are married and uh, they live with their family in, uh, one of them lives in Portugal and the other one lives in England. Um, my daughter, she is minor, so she was not able to look after my grandmother by herself at that time. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, who informed you about your grandmother that she was sick uh, in Brazil? I got the call from one of my sister, Maria, um, who actually happened to visit my grandmother in Brazil. And uh, she went there around March of 2015 and she discovered that she was really ill and needed proper medical assistance at that time. Since you you were uh, working uh, full-time in Canada, so did you inform your Canadian uh, employer about uh, your situation and you wanted to leave? Actually, I did inform my employer and uh, I did get a leave of absence for three months after hearing my grandmother's illness. And, uh, and that's the time I left to go to Brazil. Okay. What happened next? Did you come back to Canada for three months? Um, actually, after three months, I was uh, still looking after my grandmother and Marcella, both of them at the same time. 
and uh, my grandmother's you know doctor's visits were endless her health continued to uh, Detroit day by day uh, without any diagnosis so during that time um, I was able to extend my leave of absence for three months and the following another three months so uh, in all I took three extensions of three months at that time and and one very important question so uh, are you still in contact or in uh, in a relationship with your uh, girlfriend uh, Rosemary uh, given my circumstances at that time, um, I was gone for a very long period. Uh, you know, I was away in Brazil and my girlfriend was in Canada. Uh, we were not able to um, connect or, you know, see each other for a very long time. And Rosemary was asking persistently when I would come back. Um, and, you know, she was not just prepared to understand my situation. So um, in January of 2016, she actually called me. And uh, she said she's breaking up with me because she's now in another relationship. Oh, okay. Uh, and and uh, to, uh, during uh, the questioning from my other counsel, you were mentioning about that you two together bought a condo, right? So what happened with that condo finally after you, you guys broke up? Um, yes, we, we bought a condo together in December of uh, 2014. Um, but when we broke up, uh, we decided uh, Rosemary will be keeping the condo and uh, she will be paying me off soon since I was making contributions towards the costs associated. And and since you, you are living in Brazil for a, quite a long time, and, and how did you uh, manage your living? So did you start working there or okay, how did you manage your expenses? Um, actually, no, I did not work. Um, outside Canada in Brazil at all uh, because uh, looking after my grandmother was a full-time role that I was playing and um, also my minor daughter was there so I ended up using all my savings that I had in my Canadian account using my uh, Canadian bank card and also you you gave uh, gave the disclosure okay if I'm not wrong right uh, that's correct yes uh, did you consider hiring a caregiver for your grandmother by any chance? Um, absolutely, I did, because looking after my grandmother was a 24-hour full-time job. Um, she needed a full-time, you know, uh, a care. And I tried to hire someone to help and live with us at that time. But uh, due to her illness, she was a very difficult and unpleasant person. And, uh, you know, given because she was ill for a very long time, she used to yell sometime and uh, she only wanted me to be with her. So I, I felt obliged to look after her myself because, you know, while growing up, she was the only one who actually looked after me for my entire life. We can understand the situation. And, and uh, well, when did your grandmother pass away? Uh, she actually uh, passed away in February of 2000. 18 she was ill for quite a few years and uh yeah in february 2018 and that's the time i decided that i should go back and you know start move on with my life back in canada so uh, she passed away in february 2018 and why did you wait until may 2019 to apply for your travel document it's more than a year uh since she passed away like can you give us the details um, I, I really wanted to come back um, after my grandmother passed away. Uh, that was in February 2018. But as I mentioned, I was pretty much living on my savings for the last uh, you know, few years while I was looking after here in Brazil, and I was not working at all. Um, my ex-girlfriend, uh, Rosemary, had no money to pay me off. So we both agreed to um, sell the condo we bought together in December of 2014. It's just the sale of the condo. Um, took a little bit longer than anticipated. And um, it was finalized in May of 2019. And uh, once I received the money uh, from the sale of condo, I applied for my uh, permanent resident travel document. Okay, um, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Philip Torres. Uh, I have no more question. I believe my other counsel, uh, he doesn't have any other question as well. So, uh, we are now going to uh, submit our council submission as a closer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, honorable member, 
Um, this submission is made on behalf of Mr. Philip Torres, appealing against the decision of the visa officer, refusing his permanent resident travel document on the grounds of failing to meet the residency of obligation under Section 28 of the Immigration and Refugee Act and lack of sufficient humanitarian and compassionate consideration. Mr. Torres, a native of Brazil, became a permanent resident of Canada under the skilled worker category in October of 2013. In the years following, due to family obligations and unforeseen circumstances, primarily surrounding the critical health condition and eventual de death of his paternal grandmother, who had been who has been caring for his minor daughter, Marcella, in Brazil, the appellant could not return to Canada. Under Section 28 of the ERPA, stipulates that a permanent resident must comply with the residency obligation concerning the time they spend in Canada. However, it is submitted that under subsection 28.2c, the appellant is exempt from the residency obligation due to the presence of humanitarian and compassionate grounds. Honorable member, I would like to refer to Kantaswamy versus Canada case. In this significant case, the Supreme Court of Canada highlighted the necessity to consider the humanitarian and compassionate grounds in a flexible and expansive manner. The court emphasized evaluating the applicant circumstances from a compassionate perspective, which can include a wide range of consideration that could potentially justify an exemption from the ordinary requirements of the law. Applying the principles of the Kantaswamy case, Mr. Torres circumstances, having to provide urgent care for his ailing grandmother and support his daughter in Brazil should be reviewed with a broader lens than encapsulates the humanitarian and compassionate grounds that motivated his extent stay outside Canada. Mr. Torres has to, had to attend to his ailing grandmother who had been primary caregiver to his daughter, an obligation upheld by Canadian family values as reflected in case law, such as Baker versus Canada in 1999. We are concerned with the visa office's denial of the permanent resident travel document application submitted by our client, Mr. Philip Torres. We firmly argue that the initial decision failed to recognize the exceptional and humanitarian circumstances which precluded Mr. Torres from fulfilling his residency obligations. Herein, we present the relevant case law to bolster our appeal for compassionate reconsideration of Mr. Torres, as mentioned for, for um, under Baker versus Canada. We humbly submit that the appellant had every intention of returning to Canada and fulfilling his residency obligation. However, he was constrained by circumstances beyond his control which merit significant consideration under humanitarian and compassionate grounds, including the BIOC. In light of the above submissions and the case law cited, it was respectfully requested that the decision of the visa officer be set aside and my client, Mr. Torres, be granted the permanent residency travel document, thereby upholding the principles of justice, equality, and good, good conscience. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.